You may have seen some news about something called Xinjiang cotton last week. What is Xinjiang cotton and what's been going on? My name is Bobber and I'm the program director at Campaign for Uyghurs and this video serves as a short summary of what's been going on in the last week regarding Uyghur forced labor and the Chinese government response. So far, there's been intense pressure on companies to exit from the Uyghur Autonomous Region, what Uyghurs call East Turkestan. What we're seeing is reports of mass forced labor in addition to the reports of genocide, with up to 1.6 million Uyghurs at risk for forced labor. Much of this forced labor results in harvesting cotton. The Uyghur region, East Turkestan, is a massive, massive global supplier of cotton providing 20% of the world's supply, which is about one in five garments. Last week, there was an uproar on Chinese media, social media, an app called Weibo, which is the equivalent of Twitter there. The Youth Communist League, which is controlled by the Communist Party of China, had posted something about H&M, saying that if H&M wishes to divest from the Uyghur region and stop purchasing Xinjiang cotton, then how can we let them sell their clothing in China? And so, the manufactured mass hysteria or outrage that the Youth Communist League created on Weibo resulted in a firestorm of Chinese citizens promising to boycott brands that have made statements on Xinjiang cotton. As a result, several companies took down their statement, and several organizations, including the Better Cotton Initiative and the Ethical Trading Initiative, took down their statements about forced labor and cotton in East Turkestan as well. Inditex, which is Zara's parent company, took down one of their statements, and companies like Muji and Asics, as well as Fila, have pledged to continue using Xinjiang cotton, which is essentially a pledge to continue using Uyghur slavery to make their clothing. PVH, which is the parent company that owns Tommy Hilfiger and Calvin Klein, also took down their statement. VF, which owns the North Face and Vans, did the same. In fact, if you go to forcelaborfashion.org, you can go and find a coward's list of companies that have taken down their statements. Then you'll be able to see who exactly bends down when the wind blows so slightly in their way. So why did that start happening? Why did the Chinese regime begin to respond last week? Well, last Monday, there was targeted sanctions placed on several officials that were involved in the genocide of Uyghur people in East Turkestan. This was a coordinated effort by the US, the EU, the UK, and Canada. To fight back, and possibly a show of growing desperation, the Chinese regime called for a boycott of brands that don't support the use of Uyghur forced labor. A foreign ministry spokesperson, Hua Chunying, had posted a photo comparing the lives and livelihood of Uyghur workers picking cotton in 2018 to those of black sharecroppers in Louisiana in 1908. Really? The lives of Uyghurs are marginally better than the lives of black sharecroppers only 40 years after slavery ended? That is not something that you should be proud of, Hua Chunying. That's not an accomplishment. In fact, that's a low-grade self-own. In addition to Hua Chunying's comments, there's been more and more effort to dispute the reports that forced labor is taking place, trying to show East Turkestan cotton fields being picked by machines, mechanized rather than forced labor individuals. In the same vein, however, after claiming that there's no forced labor and that people aren't doing anything, they're also using photos of Uyghur people looking happy picking cotton. So, which one is it? Is East Turkestan full of mechanized cotton picking, or are you full of sh